Michael Cohen went from being Donald Trump's right-hand man to one of his chief accusers. Why the about face? The point starts right now. It's probably fair to say that Michael Cohen has become a painful thorn in Donald Trump's side. He hosts a podcast, Mea Culpa, The Beatdown Club, and has written a book, Revenge. Is he getting revenge? Mr. Cohen, thank you so much for joining me. And I, my first question is this. You came face to face with Donald Trump in the courtroom when you testified against him at the civil trial, um, where he's being, uh, you know, there's a trial of whether he should stop being able to do business in New York. You were once his right-hand man. You probably would have thrown yourself in front of a bus for him. And now you're the person who's, uh, you know, testifying against him. What is that like for you? So actually, the exact sentence that I use is that I'd be willing to take a bullet for him, except for one situation where he's the one pulling the trigger. In this specific case, I thought I was going to feel differently not forgetting that I had sat by his side literally for over a decade, every single day. So I was expecting to have a whole slew of emotion, but surprisingly, when I was brought up to the stand and I saw him uh, at, in the defendant's table, I felt absolutely nothing. But he I was felt the same way you. that you would feel. He I was felt the exact same you. way that you would feel if you were passing someone in the street. Even when he glared at you and, and gave you the evil eye, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, I winked at him. <laughs> you winked at him in the courtroom? I did. Did that make you feel good? That no, didn't do anything for me. It was no different than when somebody passes me in the street, gives me a thumbs up, and I give them a head nod. It was the same thing. I felt surprisingly absolutely nothing. Now, remember, I wasn't there because I wanted to be there. I was there because I was subpoenaed by the New York Attorney General to be there, and I was complying with a, with a court subpoena. So let me ask you this question. If he gets elected president, are you afraid that it's going to come after you and come after members of your family? Well, I don't know so much about members of my family. I mean, that certainly would be revenge um, or retaliation, but 100 percent. But, Marsha, let me be very clear. This is not you and me coming up with some hyperbolic question in order to obtain ratings or whatnot. This is his words. He has gone so far as to put it out there. And basically what he's doing is he's threatening people. He's doing it through the media, which really does need to be stopped by the various different judges that have gag orders on him. But this is nothing shy of obstruction of justice and witness tampering. He is telling the American people, if I win, if I am reelected, I am going to get revenge on all of these people. And who does that, in, you know, who does that encompass? People like myself, civilians who he has some angst uh, or anger towards, judges, um, he's going to have it towards the press. Anyone that he is angered with or by, he is going to use the full power of the DOJ in order to exact his revenge. The second part of that that cannot be ignored and why Americans are ignoring this, I can't figure it out. He also said that if, in fact, that he wins the election, the first thing he's going to do is rewrite the Constitution. And by rewriting the Constitution, his intent is to strip the judiciary and the legislature of its tripartite power, conferring all power onto the executive branch, namely himself. What does that make him? It makes him the king, the supreme leader, the monarch, the ruler. And he will do what Vladimir Putin does. He will turn around and take enemies, lock them up to the same extent that he did it to Navalny. But doesn't a constitutional change have to be approved by the states? Well, not when you're Donald Trump. He's going to push the envelope as far as he can. And more importantly, he's going to then, of course, threaten Supreme Court 
because it'll ultimately get there. But what's the difference if it's at the Supreme Court or not? He's already stripped them of the meaning, the judiciary of its tripartite power. He is pushing the limits of the Constitution. And let me be very clear about something. He did it already once. He did it to me when I was unconstitutionally remanded back to Otisville because I refused to waive my First Amendment constitutional right, making me the first political prisoner to be held by my own country. And here's my prediction, because you know, Marsha, most of my predictions to date have come you know, to fruition, unfortunately, is that, that I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be the last. I may be the first, but I'm definitely not gonna be the last. When you go to sleep at night, and you think about not only the fact that you testified already against him, but you have to testify against him in the Stormy Daniels case. Do you worry about what he's going to try to do to you? Uh, you have to worry because... I mean, you sat like next said, to him. You yeah, saw what he did. I, yeah, look, and, and I've suffered the repercussions of it already. Look, I was already out, despite the fact that all people had to do is read the Michael Cohen... Uh, sentencing memo. And I've been saying the same thing about the lack of the tax evasion or the HELOC. I still nevertheless ended up pleading guilty for various reasons. It's all in my book, Revenge. I pled guilty. I did my time. I came out and I was unconstitutionally remanded. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. And again, this is who Donald Trump is. He will exact revenge on anyone that has angered him. And as Donald has said, again, this isn't me saying it. If you punch me, I'm going to punch you 10 times harder. And he now has the power, or he would have the power if he is reelected to punch even more than 10 times harder. So does that make you decide when you file your tax returns that you have to be ever, ever really, really careful and not give him any, any possibility that anybody could question anything? Look, since I first started filing my taxes, I've used CPAs and I give them every single document. There's no cash in my life. Every single dollar was deposited into Capital One Bank, which happened to, by the way, be located in the base of the building that I lived in. And I am a little OCD, especially with my documents. I had it in a three ring notebook that was tabulated in descending order. All the accountant had to do is reconcile the bank accounts, whatever he told me to pay. I gave him the account number and he wired the money off to the U.S. Treasury. I mean, you know, I can't do more than that. And I have, thank God, now especially, I have really excellent accountants. And um, like previously before, I've never been audited in my life. I've never received letters from the IRS. I've never had overseas bank accounts, overseas nominee. There's no elements of tax evasion that existed in my life before. There's certainly none that exists today, and there definitively will be none that exists tomorrow. But do you ever sit, lay awake at night and say to yourself, how could he get me? I lay awake all the time, and it's not just how he's going to do it. You know, you get tremendous um, PTSD post 51 days of solitary confinement where you're locked into a little room, you know, by yourself and you don't move. So I lay awake at night thinking about a lot of things. I think about the loss of Roe v. Wade. I think about the fact that my daughter has less constitutional rights than my mother or even my grandmother. I, I stay awake at night thinking about what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, what's going on in Israel versus Hamas. I think about these stupid people that are walking around, whether it's New York all the way to wherever, to Canada, pulling down miss signs of missing children. I mean, I, wait, I lay awake at night thinking about a lot of things, unfortunately. Will Donald Trump ever go to jail for any of these trials? I mean, he's got this civil trial and then four criminal trials. You think he'll ever, remember, he appeals and appeals and appeals. Will he ever go to jail if he's convicted? So look, appeals come to an end. Eventually, the appellate court makes a decision, and so be it, whether it's in his favor or against him. Uh, I believe that Donald Trump will be held accountable on all of the counts that have been brought against him. The question, though, will he end up going to prison? This may shock you, Marsha, but I actually don't want to see the man in prison. 
In fact, why? I'm concerned about him going to prison. Why? And you may say, why? A very significant and a very and a very difficult home confinement would be the right thing. And I say that because for four years, he received briefings of national security information. And the same way that he just handed out the information to people who were members of Mar-a-Lago, or he showed it to... Uh, you know, uh, dignitaries from other countries or just spoke about it as if it didn't mean anything. I'm more concerned about America's national security and the things that Donald Trump will say or the information that he can give away while he's institutionalized. So I am more concerned about America's national security and the protection of Americans than I am about seeing, you know, this, this watching on television, this scene of Donald Trump checking in to some federal or state prison. We'll have to leave it right there for now, but we'll be right back.